Hello everyone, welcome back to the Dead Rising Commentary. In this part, we're cleaning up a couple of last survivors before getting to one of the more climactic moments in the game, which is the Last Resort Bomb mission. Oh no, poor Susan! Poor Grandma Susan. She's just having a ball, and then suddenly, you know, she gets attacked by zombies, as we all do. I'm choosing to ignore the people from the gun shop who are walking into a corner <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's just randomly... Like, Leroy here is one of the easiest survivors to find in the game. Because he's marked, and then they just, like, say, go here and find him. And you do, and you talk to him, and then he just goes. Like, there's at this point in the game, you're kind of expecting for there to be something else to finding the survivors, but this <laughs> yeah. guy is just like, nope, I'm just here. <laughs> Leary, why are you hiding in the cosmetics store? <laughs> Nobody else wanted to be there. It smells too bad for the zombies. Or actually, you know what? The cosmetics store would probably be better because it would smell better than the zombies because all of the makeup and stuff and the perfumes would outsmell the zombie smell. Even in a zombie apocalypse, you gotta look good. That that's true. I mean, Frank embodies this ideal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Carlito, that message it's that message is one of the only times in the game where they have like relevant story stuff happening outside of the gameplay, uh, or re relevant story stuff happening in the gameplay. So instead of the game cutting to cutscene for that intercom announcement, you actually hear it over the intercom, and then they address it in the next cutscene coming up right here. So basically, just to spoil what's going to be happening in 30 seconds, his, his plan was to blow up the mall if anything went bad, which clearly it did. So... I just want to say thank God Frank was wearing shorts. Because <laughs> he was just spread eagle right there. Oh my. You know... Look, oh God, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, now I'm getting Mass Effect flashbacks. How so? Um, especially in the first two games, both male and female shepherds had the same animation set for everything. So this meant that there were certain situations where Shepard would sit down like a man, even if she wasn't one. And if you were wearing certain costumes on the Normandy in the second game, that could get awkward. Mm -hmm. Mass Effect 2 had alternate costumes? Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, you could get different sets of clothes. There's a, a dress that you wear to uh, a party in uh, Kasumi's DLC where you sort of infiltrate a society gathering of criminals um, and you get to keep the dress to wear on the Normandy. If you well, actually that's, that's wear, interesting. If you actually wear it, though, there's a lot of bad animation and clipping issues in the cutscenes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, because this is the mid-2000s, and we didn't know how to do clothes. Yeah. Actually, we still kind of don't know how to do clothes, to be fair. But, uh, yeah, so I think actually we have pretty much every survivor in the game at this point. I think that there aren't that many left after this. Although... The photographer's pride mission coming up here. Okay, I lied. There is still a survivor left for that one. But the photographer... But after this point, there's not really that much. <laughs> for some reason, I just... I find his animation for turning to be incredibly funny. So you I you, you mean the lack of animation in that instance? Uh, yeah, good point. It looks like a Mario Party minigame, kind of. There can only nice. be one! <laughs> Otis, did you see that awesome slice? <laughs> <laughs> this is a walkie-talkie, Frank. <laughs> I know you're watching the security cameras, Otis. You switch over to the sword, and you're holding the sword in the hand that you're holding your, your walkie-talkie up to your ear with. Oh, hey, man. So, sorry about the whole being a dick to you, dude. I'm going to show you my picture... To make it up. See, look! I fed this guy bugs! Isn't that great? Ha! How you like them apples, huh? You see, I think outside the box. Ken's an asshole, just so you know. <laughs> We're in the middle of a zombie apocalypse, you fool. I'm just 
Yeah, no, that's actually what he did. His plan was to take a picture of the moment where somebody becomes a zombie. So he fed them the zombie larva. <laughs> okay, come on, try to shoot me. I'm wearing the Mega Man X helmet. You can't shoot through that. It's invincible. So yeah, you think like after you do all these tasks, he'll just go with you to the safe space. But no, no, he turns out to be a psychopath. Great. Yeah, with some interesting, some interesting hobbies, I also have to point out. Like, I don't know how he managed to have that chain and leash with the BDSM studs on it, just lying around. But he did. And again, where are the zombies? Well, I'm more interested in how the hell he got it tied to the ceiling there. Oh, they're right over there. Don't you see? <laughs> Out. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's Knuckles Chaotix, uh! <laughs> so, there's like a, like an in-game, like, 15 minute period where you can be here on time in order to save this guy. It's incredibly tight in order to, in order to do it, though. Oh. Oh, so there, so it's a different event, depending on... Yeah, whether or not you're, like, you're there at the earliest possible moment or not, pretty much. Because if you get there, like, because the meeting's at noon. If you get there, like, at 11.45, then you can save this guy. But if you're noon to, like, 1 or whatever, he's already dead. And also, you don't get trapped in his weird BDSM device. Huh. Interesting. So it's a reward for thinking outside the box. Pretty much, yeah. Also, you're supposed to know that <laughs> Ken's a little bit of a... He's a bit of a bitch. <laughs> Pretty much, but because he's one of the only characters in the game to have voiced cutscenes. So you the only people who do that are story relevant people or bosses. So you're you're supposed to put two and two together. <laughs> and Frank does a reasonable thing, you just throw the camera away, say fuck you. Yeah, but that was a nice camera though. I have a nicer one. <laughs> you could have saved the memory card at least, or the lens. Well the memory card'll be fine. I <laughs> just threw the camera. This mall's got, like, a billion cameras in here. Eh, okay, so hold on there, Tad. Yeah, man, Capcom really just were trying to rip me off. I, I need to talk to my lawyer. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> I repeat, we are out of Tad license plate. We are out of Tad license plates. <laughs> I like to imagine he's saying that out loud so they can hear him. Good. <laughs> what? Are, you're not... <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna untie me? No, hold on a second. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. The reward for getting Kent, for beating Kent, though, is kind of lame. Because you get the camera book, which just increases the amount of points you get for taking pictures. And this is day three, so you're not really taking that many more pictures or needing to level up that much anymore. So it's a bit of a waste. So you're just gonna leave it there? Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. It'll respawn. Well, he's already he's already he's already maxed out, so it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It'll also respawn if I ever come back here again after we beat him. So if I needed it, I could always come back and get it. Yeah, we don't get like a bonus, and it's not like Luigi's Mansion where like the more gold you get, you get like a better ending or something. It's not like if we take a lot of awesome pictures, the ending gets better or something. Uh, no, nah, it's just, just for experience sport. points. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess they, they do rally it up at the end, so you could consider it, like, a score. But then again, high score doesn't really matter. So, mm. yeah. Fair enough. Not not to mention that the people with... There is a leaderboard for this game, but it's the people who have played the game enough times so that it's, like, all maxed out anyway. So, right. you know, it's not like you're going <laughs> to get the gamer clout for posting your, you know... 50 million PP run of Dead Rising, you know. Ah, oh, it's the people who it's the people who hacked the game followed by the people who played the game a million hours. Oh yeah, that's true. Because the only thing better than the 30 second run of Green Hill Zone that you put onto the Sonic 1 leaderboards is the negative 99 minute run of Green Hill Zone you put onto the Sonic leaderboards. Yeah. And what was it Sonic 4 where that was actually a thing? Where people were able to get negative number ru uh, run times onto the leaderboard or something remember. like that. Because it's definitely happened at least once. 
Hey, lady, can we pick it up? Did we pick what up? I was just saying, hey, lady, can we pick this up? Can we oh. move along? <laughs> oh, right, yeah. The How slow the dialogue moves in this game, especially when you've played Dead Rising 2, it, it takes a while. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure, like, in-game, like, a minute is, like, close to, like, ten minutes or so in, like, in, in uh, game time. Uh, hold on. This, this survivor's last name is actually Ravendark. Yep. <laughs> She's one of the more interesting survivors in the game because you can only save her if you progress the story to a certain point. But if you do progress the story to a certain point, um, certain plot-important characters like Barnaby can't be saved. So... Um, if you want to save her... <laughs> Sorry, <you> Lily. <laughs> I'm trying... Sorry, Pamela. <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to find the people who want to leave. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> so anyway, uh, get in front of the door so I can push you down for being a dumbass. <laughs> uh, if you haven't noticed, they were going to blow up the mall. This is not the time for shenanigans. Well, then when is the time for shenanigans? Not during the zombie apocalypse. Is it what you're doing right now, shenanigans? I mean, to us, yes. But Frank is taking this situation incredibly seriously, regardless of what his wardrobe might imply. Okay, you see this sword poking through your crotch right here? This is the sword <laughs> of the hero. That makes me the hero. So you should probably do what I say. Got that it. means I'm in charge. <laughs> it took me 13 hearts in order to pull this thing out of that rock. And I am going to take advantage of it, goddammit. <laughs> well, you listen here, Frank. Strange women in pawns distributing swords is not a good basis as a form of government. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, it's a good basis for kicking your ass, isn't it? <laughs> see? See? We see the flaws inherent in the system. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I am going to use them. All over your face. <laughs> Wouldn't a sword you found in a rock be really not in the good shape for ass kicking? Or slashing, I suppose? Hey, thanks. Kelly, can I leave? <laughs> Kelly? <laughs> Kelly, you can leave. Alright. There we go. Time for time for us to be awesome and ride our motorcycle into hold on. Hold on. <laughs> 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 <Ow>! <laughs> <laughs> it looks so much easier when Shadow the Hedgehog did it. The controls for these motorcycles don't look all that great, though. It's not the worst I've played. Like, it's it's fine. It's controllable. Well, it's just it looks, a little... It looks better than Shadow the Hedgehog, but it still uh, looks pretty bad. That's not hard, though. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah. any game with vehicles controls better than Shadow the Hedgehog's vehicles. Mm. It's like you think from the opening cutscene that that motorcycle is going to be so fun and then you play Shadow and it's like slow as molasses. That's the disappointing part because it is actually faster to draw. Which I mean I suppose makes sense considering that you're Shadow so you're as fast as Sonic. Oh yeah, I also always get lost in the uh, underground tunnels because they're underground tunnels and so I can never tell which way is which. No, for Although, sure. if you're trying to play the game without the map, just as, like, a personal challenge or whatever, I do like that they have the signs that tell you which way to turn in order to go to different parts of the mall. Because You that's... are here. How does it know? <laughs> <laughs> because that's something that you would actually have, like, in a real maintenance tunnel like this. So, I appreciate that. I do like that, just in general, um, as a game thing. Uh, being able to navigate with your eyes, rather than the quest indicator or the map. I know that for, because uh, that was an option added to um, Breath of the Wild. A lot of people really liked when you were able to take the mini map off the screen, and then you just had to actually like explore that game the uh, way that it kind of. Intended. The reason a lot of players hate mini maps and stuff in open world games, in particular, is because after a while, if the mini map is left on screen, a lot of players develop the habit of just staring at it whenever they're Whoa. gone. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you spend a lot of time just playing the game looking at the minimap rather than playing the game. Uh, I played, so Hyrule Warriors. There are some Hyrule Warriors missions where I pretty much play exclusively via the map versus, like, actually yeah. <laughs> playing the the, the, the the real game. Oh yeah, Carlito's here and he's an asshole. Um, yeah. He's trying <laughs> to stop you from stopping the bombs, so he's he got... He set the, us up the bomb. 
he's got the truck and he's gonna like try to run you over and different things like that uh but one good thing about carlito though is is that when you beat him up in the truck there's a set cutscene that plays and the cutscene will then warp you over to a specific <laughs> part of the map so you can use it as a teleportation trick and skip some backtracking which is fun <laughs> teleportation yeah <laughs> scooby to do up yeah oh where did you so learn terrible. to drive? I wasn't going fast enough to skid this far. <laughs> Physics? Pishaw. Alright, it'll be... <laughs> Not this time! <laughs> oh no, he's got the dress buster. We'll never be able to beat him. That's my weakness. <laughs> Carlito, Carlito, man. Oh, we've got five eighths of a roster. We have a uh, cult leader. We have a uh, crap. What was the other one I said during that fight? Oh, uh, dress, uh, teddy bear dress man. Oh yeah, teddy bear dress man. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no! uh, uh, uh. So it wasn't just the car that crashed there. <laughs> hey. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so the worst part about that is I had to do the entire bomb mission all over again. <laughs> Yay. <laughs>